day and welcome to another video. In today's lesson we are going to learn how to make the basket weave stitch. We'll be using a pattern from Umbarkok Designs and Rhonda has very kindly let me use her pattern for this project. This is also part of the Christmas Eve cast on which is every year we have a project that everybody starts on Christmas Eve. There will be a Facebook group for this and I will put a link for you in the description box. Rhonda has lots of lovely free written patterns located on her website and I will put the link that you need in the description box so you can go and check out some more great free patterns. For my scrap basket weave blanket I used all the odds and ends that I had of Red Heart Super Saver. This is a 10 ply or a worsted weight yarn and if you're in the UK it is equivalent to an Aran weight. But you can use any thickness of yarn that you like. I used three strands at once. But you can make it with one strand, you can make it with two, or you can make it with as many as you like. With three strands of worsted weight yarn, I used a 12mm crochet hook. When one of my strands ran out on my blanket, I just added in another colour. There wasn't any method to the colours that I used, I just grabbed one out of my basket and added it in. I cannot wait to see what you make with this pattern. This pattern can be used to make a dishcloth if you use some cotton yarn. You can use this pattern to make a scarf and also a blanket. So let's get started on the lesson. For your supplies we're going to need a yarn needle with a large eye, a pair of scissors, a crochet hook to go with your yarn. I am going to be using a 6mm crochet hook today. But what you want to do is look at your yarn label and that will show you what you need to use with your yarn. Today we're going to use Red Heart with Love in metallic. This is a very bright pink. It is called Fuchsia. And it is bright. It's looking pretty bright on the camera. So yeah, it's not lying. <laughs> and it's got this beautiful sparkle through it. It is a number four weight yarn. For us Australians that is a 10 ply or it's an Aran weight for everybody in the UK. This project will work with any thickness of yarn. So if you have a DK weight yarn, which is a number three, or an eight ply, or you have thicker yarn, it's completely up to you what you use for this project. I've just used the Red Heart Fashion Soft in a previous video. That was really nice to work with. And also the Red Heart Soft yarn, that's a DK weight. That's really nice to work with as well. And it's really squishy. We need to start with a slip knot. You can do this any way that you like. And on our pattern, it says that this pattern works with a multiple of eight chains plus four. The sample that's worked in the pattern has 28 chains. If you want to make yours wider than that, so if you wanted to make a big blanket like we've, we're doing for the scrap blanket that is for this project, then you can chain a lot more than 28 and you just chain in multiples of 8. So what that means if you, you make 8 chains and of course that's not wide enough for really any project so you want to chain another 8 chains. And so on. So we're going to chain chain another eight chains. And once we get to the projects wide enough, then we are going to add four stitches. So so four chains on the end. So so far I have twenty four chains, and then that's three lots of eight and then you want to add four to the end one two three and four that brings us up to the 28 chains that we need for this pattern so this is just a sample this is going to work really well if you want to make squares for a blanket because we do single crochet around the outside of this sample and what you can do is join them all together so you can use up lots of scrap yarn you could also use it to make a huge blanket just as one big square and then obviously you would do a lot more chains than your 
28 that we've done. As long as you keep it in multiples of 8 and add 4 on the end, you can make it as wide as you like. You can make a coin size bed if you wanted to. These will make brilliant dishcloths if you use a cotton yarn, which is what I was looking for and I thought I had some in my stash, but apparently I don't. And also, you can use this to make a scarf. So at the moment it's 28 stitches across, so you would make your chain as wide as you want your scarf, and then you just keep going for your length. So when this pattern tells us to finish off, you don't finish off, you just keep going. Same with the blanket, you just keep going. <laughs> But this is just for the sample so that you can get used to the pattern. So that's a great practice. So after we have our chains in multiples, 8 plus 4, we are going to begin in the fourth chain from the hook. Three skip chains count as one double crochet. So we're going to do one double crochet in the fourth chain from the crochet hook. We do not count the one that's already on our crochet hook, so that's one, two, three, and four. And we work a double crochet into there. And one double crochet in each stitch across. If I can find where to put my crochet hook, there we go. This is so pretty, this yarn. Whoopsie. I always find the very first row the most fiddly because there's nothing to hang on to. And you feel like you've just started to learn to crochet. So one stitch, one, one double crochet in each stitch across. So pause the video and I'll meet you when we are at the end. So I now have 26 stitches and that includes the very first one here which was just our turning chain. And I just realized too that I had the fan going before just in that first part of the video so I'm sorry if that was interrupting. It shouldn't have been too noisy it was only a little fan. So row two we're going to turn our work around and we're going to chain two and this counts as a half double crochet. The majority of this project is worked in double crochet but on the beginning and the end of our rows we do a half double crochet and I've never seen that before in a pattern with uh, like front post stitches and stuff. I haven't done a lot but I haven't seen it either so but it really works. I really like it. We're going to do one front post double crochet in each of the next four stitches. So yarning over and in the next four, so we've done that one because there's one above it. So the next one is your second stitch across and it's going to be a front post. So we're going to go from the front around the back, grab your yarn and complete your double crochet. Again, around the back and complete your double crochet. From the front, around the back, and we need four all together, so that's three. Into the next four stitches, we are going to work one back post double crochet. So we just did our front because our crochet hook was coming in from the front now it's going to come in from the back. So yarn over go around the back to the next stitch which is here. Go in front with your crochet hook poke it back out the back and work your double crochet. Again around the back, crochet hook pokes out the front and around that stitch and then pull through and complete your double crochet. So that's 
two. We need four all together. So hands up, who is trying this uh, this basket weave stitch for the first time? I know there's a lot of people that don't like it or think it's going to be really hard. And putting my hand up, that was me. Before I tried this a little while ago, I thought it was going to be too hard. It's really not. <laughs> I think I was overthinking it. So now we want to just repeat that. So what we need to do, we've just done our four back post. Now we're going to do our four, our four front post. And that's our repeat all the way across. It's four front and then four back, four front, four back. And then you just repeat that all the way. So pause the video and I'll meet you when we are at the end. You can see it's starting to sort of form a pattern. So pause video and I'll meet you at the end. So you would have ended with four back post double crochets and then we've got our chain stitch here which is where we are going to work our half double crochet. So we're going to find the top of that stitch one, two and three and we're going to work into the top of that chain for a half double crochet, so it was yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all three. It's a great, I'm going to say it again, it's a great way to finish on this row for this type of pattern. So row three, we're going to do a chain two. And if we look at our work, we can see it's a front post because they're all sticking to the front. A back post your stitches are at the back hiding around here or you've got that ridge that's your back post stitches your front posts are just all flat so what we need to do is repeat row 2 which is four front post double crochet so going around the stitches for a front post stitch And then we've got four back post stitch. So again, we're going to work around the back. So go around the back. It's a little bit harder to see because it kind of hides away. But once you know where it is, it's pretty good. And then if you look at your work in the row below, you can see we've got front post. So we're going to do four front post. And then we're going to repeat this across, working our four front post and our four back post stitches. This is a very fitting yarn for Christmas time because it's sparkly. So you can see it's sort of forming a pattern already. So work your way across and I'll meet you when we are at the end of the row. When we get to the ends, we're going to work a half double crochet in the turning chain that just there. Try and go through two loops. It just makes it a bit of a more neater edge. So we're going to turn our work around, chain two, row four and five is the same. So we're going to ch we've done our chain two and we're going to work one back post double crochet in each of the next four stitches. So row four is where it changes. So if you're looking at a front post, which are these ones, you're going to work a back post. I'm going to do that in the next four stitches. 
Don't forget if I'm going too quick you can always pause a video. You can also slow me down in the settings tab which on a PC, on my PC, when you're looking at the video screen it's just on the the bottom right of the video screen where there's a black bar where like the play button is and everything just on that bottom black bar there it's just along there you can you can slow me down if you want to you can also speed me up which is hilarious because I sound like a chipmunk <laughs> in the next four stitches we are going to work one front post double crochet so around the front with these ones And that is our repeat all the way across. So now we're up to the front posts on the row below, so we know we need to change that to a back post. Ugh. Yep. I know how to crochet. <laughs> What's going on? Here we go. We're on a roll. I don't know why, but I find the back posts a lot harder. And then into the front of these ones, because previously there were back post double crochet. And also it matches up with what the pattern is going across the row. So we need to do four front posts. Repeat this all the way across, keeping in your pattern of four front posts, four back posts and I will meet you when we are at the end. Just pause the video and I'll see you there. When we're at the end we don't want to forget that last stitch otherwise our project will get smaller and smaller. Yes, yes it will. <laughs> so that's our half double crochet in that last one and you can see our pattern starting to form. Looks really really good. So row 5 is exactly the same as what we just did. So we chain 2, turn your work chain 2. And then you're looking at your crochet stitches along here and you can see that that's a back post. So you're going to do 4 back post. You can see that these here are front post because at the front you're going to do 4 back post. So let's do it. We aren't always get stuck at the most inconvenient time. I need like a little minion or something. Is that what those little yellow things are called? And um, he can sit on my desk and just unwind my yarn for me. How cool would that be if you had like little helpers? And I could make him a beanie. <laughs> oh dear. Way too much imagination. So you're going to repeat that across. We've just done four back post, four front, front post. And then you're going to do your back, front, back, front combination all the way across. And you're going to half double crochet in the end, like what we've been doing. And what we want to do is we want to repeat the last row two to row five. That is our repeat for this pattern. If you're not sure what that is, you can always rewind the video or you can look at your written pattern. Of course, we have been showing you what to do if you don't know how to read a written pattern, so that would be helping you quite a lot. And you can see our pattern starting to forming there. And that's the repeat for this pattern. It's only got four rows. And really, you've only got to concentrate on one of them because it's when you need to change to get the second lot of basket weave. So the first two rows are the same. So if we could turn our work, so we're going to do a repeat. The first two rows are the same and they start with a front post double crochet because if you look at this we've just done two rows of back post so our next two rows are front post double crochets. The two row rows after that start with back post double crochets. 
that's all you've got to remember. If you can just remember how it starts, because you've done the pattern now and you've practiced a few rows, you're going to remember what comes next. Because if you start with, so our next lot of row, stitches here is front post. Once you've done your four front posts, you're going to know that your next row, your next lot of stitches is back post. Also, if you look at the row below, that's going to tell you as well. If you can see two rows of front post already, you know your next row has to have two rows of back posts on, on top of that. So continue on repeating those four rows and in total we're going to repeat it three more times. So you're going to have this section three more times. So pause the video and I'll see you when we're ready for the edging. Here is my little sample worked up and how do you know if you've done enough rows? If you're like me you would have got lost in how many rows you had done and it, it said to repeat it three times and I was like oh no. I, I'm lost. So there's a great photo on Rhonda's website that shows you the finished project and looking at hers and if you have yours the right way so your tail will be on the left hand side if you're left handed your tail will be on the right hand side and looking at Rhonda's work there's four blocks of front post double crochet which is here. So there's one, two, three and the fourth one is at the top. And if you look on this side you've got one, two, three, four lots of front post double crochet. That's how you know if you've done the, the right amount of ro rows. You may have counted yours and got yours that way but I completely lost count. <laughs> I was sitting there for ages going have I done the right amount and I hadn't I was actually too short two rows short so that's how I figured it out and I think it's 17 rows altogether. I'm just going to double check that again the easiest way to count it because I've just counted it about four times is looking at your blocks if you start with your front post blocks and count those in two so two four six eight 10, 12, 14, 16 and then we have the beginning row which is 17 rows in total. We are now ready to do the edging so I've got it facing the same way as when I had to finish that last stitch and I'm just going to turn it sideways and we're going to work evenly single crochets all the way around. In Rhonda's pattern it says that uh, it says single crochet around the entire square evenly. My square was 25 stitches on each side. So that's what you're aiming for. If you get 26 or 24 don't worry about it. But whatever you get if you are making squares to make a blanket make sure you get that on every single one. <laughs> Otherwise when you go to join it it's not going to work. So I'm just going to chain one first and then single crochet and I'm just going to go into the spaces on the ends here you could actually go through the, the chain there but just for quickness I'm just going to go into the spaces. Let's see if I can bring this a bit closer. Basically what you want to do is just single crochet. See how there's been a big gap left there? You know that you need to put one a little bit closer. Ooh, ooh, what is going on? So another big gap. You want to make make sure you put it a bit closer. If your edge starts to ruffle, you know you've got too many stitches in there, and then just gonna have to pull it back out and try again. So if you look at it, it should lay flat. That should be straight. Ooh, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> pretty happy with that. That should be straight. And um, yeah, like I said, if it starts to ruffle, if it starts to do this, it means there's like too many stitches in there. If it starts to curve, it means there's not enough. 
So you're aiming for it to stay flat. I do have 15 years experience up my sleeve, so well, I should be able to get it pretty straight. <laughs> But, trust me, there are times when it does not work. Now I've said that, this bit will probably ruffle up. I'm not actually counting, I'm just putting in stitches. It'll be interesting to see how many I get. When we get to the end, we are going to put three single crochet into the corner there. It doesn't actually say that on the pattern I can't see. But I know if I don't, that's going to make the corner curl up and I just want it to lay flat. So into the last stitch, you're going to do three single crochet. Ooh, see how there's a bit of a kink there? That looks pretty good too. And also if it flares, if this bit flares out, sort of, I can't show you an angle. If it flares out like that, it means there's too many as well. So let's see how many I've got. I've got 26 and that does not include the three on the corner. So that's pretty good. So we're going to turn it this way and going to work along. And now we're working on the bottom edge and I'm going to single crochet over that edge. Um, tail there. So we're working into the chain which is our starting chain so and we're going to work single crochet all the way across. I'm sorry I was so far away from the camera I did not realize. So I'm going into the chain so please share your creations on Facebook. I love to see what you're up to. This is part of the Christmas Eve cast on so there is going to be a Facebook group or a Facebook event or something like that. The link that you need will be in the description box and that way you can all come over and share your your project. Share your project with us. And you can see what everybody else has done using up scraps or some people may just use one colour, who knows. It's whatever you have a lot of at your place. I don't have many scraps at the moment. because oh, I was just about to say I don't have many scraps because they're in my scrap blanket. That's what I'm making for this video. <laughs> uh, yep. It's 20 to 8 o'clock. Uh, yeah, I'm tired. It's 20 to 8 at night and I'm trying to get this video done for the Christmas Eve cast on, so... I'm not making any sense at all. Coming up to the end here, so I'm going to do three single crochet in the end. I'm going to turn my work around. I'm just going to fold this. It seems to be working much better. Get closer to the camera to see what I'm doing. And then we're going to single crochet in every stitch across. So now we are back to the last row that we crocheted with the front and back post stitches. So this is just easy. It's just crocheting across. So if you haven't joined us on Facebook, there is a link for that in the description box below this video. Please come and join us over there, there's lots of fun going on and keep up to date with the news, what's happening, new tutorials, etc. We also have a website, again, link for that is in the description box. You can get all my free written patterns there, there's also helpful hints, head sizes, charts and all that sort of thing. So once we get to the end, we're just going to single crochet. And we didn't start with three single crochet, so in this very last stitch, we're going to put three single crochet. 
going to turn our work. I'm just going to refold. And then to this very first stitch here, we are going to join. I'm going to find our scissors, cut off our yarn. You could add another round of single crochet if you wanted to. If you are, when you get to the corner stitch where you've got your three single crochet, you're going to put three single crochet into the second single crochet of your three that you've got there. So it's that corner stitch. You're going to put three in there as well, and that will stop it from curling up. I'm going to find our yarn needle. And we're going to sew in our ends. I'm actually going to turn it to the back of the work, go through the stitch, and then work into the back of the single crochets. And then snip off our end. Oh, and because we crocheted over our first end from the beginning, that's it. We're done. You could give this a nice block if you wanted to. It will, it's a little bit out of shape because of the post stitches, but if you just give it a bit of a fix up, I think that's upside down. That looks really good. That would have been perfect if that was in cotton and um, perfect size for a face washer. So now I know what I can. Uh, use this pattern for. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial. I want to say another huge thank you to Rhonda from Umbakwa Designs. Really cute pattern, easy to work up, can be used for, like I said, a dishcloth, a blanket or a scarf. I hope if you were scared of the basket weave stitch that maybe you're not that scared anymore. This is just a, a simple pattern so that you can tackle any basket weave stitches there are many variations out there so go and try another one and you never know you might learn more skills again i want to say thanks for watching please subscribe we've always got crochet tutorials coming out and until next time happy crochet and we want to do single crochet around the outside